Okay, it's Henry again, and this is part two of my review of the Master Grade Camphor. And in this part, we're going to be going over all of the weapons and accessories. So, first off, I guess we'll go over the two bazookas. And here they are. Like I said, you get two of them. They're pretty simple. It's mainly just two halves, and then this little uh, camera pod goes on the side. And you've got a moving handle that'll move up and down. And that's about it. Relatively simple for a bazooka. But it gets the job done. Now, Kentfer can put it in his hand. And because of the movable handle on it, you can actually have it at several different angles. You can have it up under the arm like so. Or you can put it up over the shoulder. Like I said, that movable handle really helps uh, when positioning the bazooka in different ways. As you can see, the hand is almost 90 degrees to the bazooka, so uh, having that handle definitely helps in this situation. And for storage, each of the bazookas comes with a little clip right here. And it's two parts that you'll take apart. And to connect it, let's see, you'll put the part with the peg on the bottom of the bazooka and then this half will just go on top and he's got a hole on each side on his back and you can just plug that in the hole fits into a polycap pretty tightly and it'll be mounted on the back like so and of course you can put the other one on the other side as well next up Kempfer comes with two shotguns which I thought were really cool because not very many uh, mobile suits from the Gundam universe come with shotguns. Uh, very, very few. But uh, we get two of them. And they don't... The uh, little uh, pump-action mechanism doesn't work, which is kind of unfortunate. But then again, not really all that necessary. However, you do have a little sight that will flip up like so. And you have an optional stock you can put on the back. It's got a piece in here. You can just slide that out. It's a very thin piece, as you can see. And then you can bring, you get two of these, one for each shotgun, and you can slide that in. And now you've got a stock for it. You can allow them to tuck it up under the arm and have a little bit more stability with that. Now, uh, unfortunately, this stock does make it a little bit harder to uh, grab onto the shotgun, but if you work with it, you'll get it in there. And getting it in the hand isn't really the problem. It's getting that trigger finger where it's supposed to go. But like I said, once you get it in there, it's pretty stable. You're not really going to have any problems with them uh, holding it or dropping it or anything. Now, you do get one connector right here. And it's very, very similar to the ones for the, uh, for the bazookas. You're going to split that in half. And the shotgun will just kind of rest right there. We'll put the top piece on. And then this is going to go on the back skirt. Right back there, you've got a little hole. That'll plug in like so. And there you go, shotgun mounted to the back. Next up, we've got these two little Sturmfaust weapons. It's basically a grenade on a stick, and uh, he grabs hold of this and launches it, and it blows stuff up. And, oops. I'm getting them unstable here. And he can hold on to it all right, I guess. It's, it's not really going to hold on to it all that well because it is basically just a stick. But there you go. But uh, the, most of the time, you're probably going to have these mounted to the legs. And they give us these little connectors right here, which actually has a little folding thing that goes up and down. You'll plug this into this hole in the side of the leg. The connector flips up fits in there, and there you go. You'll have one on each leg. Now also, if you wanted to have this, I guess, in flight, maybe if you were planning on doing a diorama or something, you can take this off, and you've got these little fins that can go on the end of it, so it's kind of uh, in flight. So you also have that option. And next up, we've got one of the more iconic weapons of the camphor the chain mine. This is the weapon Kempfer used against the Gundam Alex in War in the Pocket. 
And basically what this is is a long chain of mines with, uh, I'm assuming, magnets on the bottom. What Camphor did is it just held onto this handle and threw it at the Alex and it kind of wrapped around. The mine stuck to Alex and then blew off all the job ham armor. So that seems to be the basic theory with this thing. And it's pretty much a wire that they give you and then has all of these uh, little mines that you're going to attach to the ends of it. And the wire is nice and flexible so you can put it in all kind of different poses. Now unfortunately this kit was made uh, in 2001 so that was before they started putting pegs in the hands and holes in the weapons. So he doesn't really hold onto this weapon all that well. I mean pretty much your only option is to have it on the ground like this or maybe wrapped around one side like this because having it displayed like in the air with him throwing it just is not going to happen unless you put it on some sort of uh, support maybe a clear rod or a wire or something but uh, straight out of the box pretty much your only option is going to ha be having it on the ground like so but even then it does still look pretty nice now camphor also comes with two beam sabers and they're stored here in the thighs which is kind of a weird place for uh, beam sabers to be stored but they do look kind of cool. Uh, the only problem with them is they're really hard to get in and out. Now, they're kind of hard to get in and out before you paint it, but after painting the kit, they're really hard to get out. So, uh, I've got this one in on this side, and it's pretty much stuck in there. Uh, even if I were to pull it out, the paint would just be scratched up unbelievably. So, uh, you've got this half right here, and really the whole beam saber doesn't even go in. It's only half of it. As you can see here so that'll be in there and you'll pull that out and then you've got the other end of the beam saber that you put together like that and then you've got the whole beam saber and they do give us two clear yellow blades and they are the curve type that you'll see with a few various master grades and of course the blade fits into the handle like so and being a beam saber he doesn't really have any problems holding it whatsoever. The only real problems with it, like I said, are getting it in and out of the leg. So I guess that, guess that about does it for my review of the Master Grade Camphor. And uh, like I said earlier, this is an older Master Grade. It came out in 2001, but for 2001 quality, it's actually pretty good. So if you compare this to, you know, a Master Grade that came out in 2010, 11, or 2012, it's not going to be that great, but then again, of course it's not. But uh, I think that it's got a really nice inner frame considering the year it was made. Uh, the posability is, it's all right. You've got some posability issues in the legs due to the design of the mobile suit. and uh, But overall, posability is pretty nice. The legs are really the only place that really suffer. Everywhere else has got pretty decent uh, articulation and posability. The weapons and accessories are where this kit really shines because you get a lot of weapons. You get two bazookas, two shotguns, two sternfoss, a chain mine, two beam sabers, and lots of really nice stuff that you can uh, use for displaying your camphor. I think it's a really good looking kit. Uh, it's very, very accurate to the way camphor looked in the show. Uh, I think it might be a little bit bulky. Uh, I don't remember Camphor being quite that thick and chunky looking in the show, but then again, that's just a minor little nitpick. Uh, the plastic colors are one of my other small complaints. Uh, like I said, I've already finished this kit, so I can't show you what it looks like unpainted, but Bandai used this kind of like greenish blue color for the outer armor, and it just looked really weird. And I wish they had just gone with a straight blue like this. But then again, I was going to be painting it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, overall, I think this is a really nice kit. The color separation was good. I really like the fact that almost all of these little yellow thrusters on the kit were done in yellow plastic. Like I said earlier, the uh, only parts you had to paint yellow were the head vulcans and the vents on the side of the face. These white stripes on the command antenna and the shoulder spike you also had to paint, but they gave you stickers for those if you didn't feel like painting them. So I guess that about does it for my review of Master Grade Camphor, and with that, I'll see you guys next time.